Hi everyone, it's Baldrick here and in today's episode I'm going to be talking about overclocking. So is it too good to be true? Basically what overclocking is, is increasing a component's clock speed in turn for more performance. That's what it really is, but to get that performance you have to go through higher temperatures, higher voltages and it can reduce the system's lifespan. So let's go over what my results were. So unoverclocked my fire strike score was 9729, keep in mind this is just a graphics benchmark and for my Battlefield 4 test range average FPS I got 116. This is not overclocked but when I overclocked my system my fire strike score became 1000 not 1,000, 11,275, and my Battlefield 4 FPS became 126. So for my Fire Strike score, that's a 15.9% increase. So this is overclocking my CPU and my GPU pretty high. And for my Battlefield 4, I got a 8.6% increase. So that's not too bad for free. Well, was it really free? I'll go into that later. But if you want to know the exact overclocks I put on my system, I have about 140 megahertz increase on my graphics card with a 20 megahertz increase on my graphics card memory. And for my CPU, I put it from 3.8 gigahertz to 4.8 gigahertz. So let's go over the benefits of overclocking. So you get extra free performance, you fully utilize your hardware, obviously by getting more performance out of it. A lot of people like me see it as a hobby and try to push their system as far as it goes. Mine is definitely as far as it goes. Uh, so let's get into the cons of overclocking your system. It can reduce component lifespan and damage chips. Keep in mind this depends on how much you overclock it. Same with increasing the temperatures. You can get pretty hot temperatures when you overclock your system. And some games and programs just don't work well with overclocked systems or components. And I find I found this in Grand Theft Auto 5, it just crashes all the time for me, even though every other bloody game it works perfectly. So it also takes ages to check if the components are stable, it can void warranties or usually does, and high overclocks require water cooling or exotic sub-zero cooling. So that's really about it with water cooling and uh, just overclocking in general. Basically if you want to get really high overclocks you need to go water cooling otherwise your components are just going to get too hot for your PC to be able to cool. But does this mean you shouldn't even try overclocking? In fact it doesn't. You can get really good overclocks out of air cooling. You just want to generally not use the Intel heatsink if you're going to do some good overclocking with your CPU. But as for graphics cards, you don't really need to worry about water cooling whatsoever. With my graphics card, I barely got any benefit out of water cooling apart from dropping the temperatures. The actual raw performance was almost the same. So water cooling isn't really worth it unless you want to get some really good CPU overclocks these days. Maybe if you're going for some record overclocks and you do all this custom stuff with your BIOS, then it might be worth getting water cooling for your CPU and graphics card, but overall you can still get a really good time out of overclocking with air-cooled components. It's as simple as that, you just don't put as much voltage into them. And as for components dying, I've had my system for about two years, obviously the 780 Ti isn't two years old, but my CPU is, and I've pushed that CPU pretty high, uh, even with water cooling it hits 80 degrees under load or the high 70s, so don't expect the best temps with water cooling either unless you've got a really expensive setup going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of getting into PC gaming where I over, not overclocked, where I talked about overclocking. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed it. Once again, uh, please tell me in the comments below if you enjoyed this episode. See you later, have a nice day.